Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So, uh, how are you seeing Bokka? actually graduated and while he was giving speech on his graduation like said so many horrifying things that got everybody reacting to it and people are not finding it funny now let me say this it is really not nice for somebody a man to come out to speak for women you are a man go and speak for your fellow man stop speaking for women so he actually came out to say that you know and most women that are graduating today will just like, you know, kind of carry their uh, their degree or their certificate on their head and not want to be mothers or uh, marry and uh, have children and all that. That Like, you know, he was saying that uh, the wife is the best thing that happened to him and the rest of it, like marrying her and all that. And I mean, women should marry uh, uh have children and he wants to go to the era whereby uh, women were homemakers i mean women stay back at home not trying to be career women and all that and at the same being homemakers and at the same time having more than like in having four children and all that man like really how did you wake up to say something like this i mean are you a woman are you supposed to come and give birth for me or you're supposed to decide what i want to do with my body or my child or if i want to use my degree or if i don't want to use my degree you are calling for the period whereby most men really suffered so hard to pay like you know you know back in the day men some men worked and their wife did not work and life was very hard for them you know what let's get into for the ladies present today congratulations on an amazing accomplishment you should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives i want to speak directly to you briefly because i think it is you the women who have had the most diabolical lies told to you how many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. Okay, quick observation. If you haven't seen that clip, it's basically some dude telling women that, yeah, your degree is fine or whatever, but you really need to invest in a husband and all that other stuff. You know, the stuff they always say. What it sounds like, just an observation. If your wife has to give up her whole life in order to help you succeed in yours, it makes you sound highly incapable. Like you need somebody else has to give up their whole life in order for you to progress forward. That makes you sound like an extreme loser. Like you kind of sound a little slow, like some some you're not able to get that on your own. This isn't. This isn't the way to get that done. Like if you want a wife, if you, if you want to subjugate women for whatever reason or whatever, this was the worst way to try to get that done. This, this was the worst way to try to talk them into that. The entire speech just made you sound like a, a grade A loser. And the tears, save them. The tears were probably at how bad this speech was. Everyone is taking what I said out of context. All I said is that we should go back to a better time, like the 50s and 60s when men were men and women had more babies than thoughts. When the only Me Too movement was one woman saying she was ready for her fourth child and another woman agreeing. Harrison Butker on setting the record straight. Harrison Butker is 28, born in 1995. What is this clearing up? I'm... What is, what is this, what's straight about this record right now? This did not help anything. 
Wow. Now, if you follow me, you know, one of the things I do is research. Before I talk about anything, if I don't already know about it, I do research. So I become familiar with things that just don't look right. Now, by now, I'm sure most of you all are familiar with the commencement speech that um, Kansas City kicker Harrison Buckert gave at Benedict College, where he basically was auditioning for the new face of the white male patriarchy. And if you haven't had a chance to see excerpts of that video, I'll tag my response and commentary video over here, and you can go watch it for yourself. Now, people like this, they say enough things that are horrible on their face that we don't have to make up anything or run with false information. Now, this meme is presently making the rounds on social media, and some people have taken to using this meme's comment as words that he actually said, and they are not. Now, as I said, people like Harrison Buckert, they say enough things on the record that we don't have to chase things that they didn't say because that in turn undermines what they actually said on the record. Now, this meme comes from a satire website. Allow me to blow this up for you. And you will see that this meme is literally marked by the site it comes from. And if you fail to do your research, you will run with anything. But once you have researched the site or come across it in the past, you will find out that it is a satire site. The fakest fake news on the internet. That's their, their, their wording, not mine. This site is literally full of memes, many of which I have seen make it into discussions, and I'm looking at people like, you all don't bother to research where your information is coming from. And in the end, even with the best of intentions, you wind up looking foolish. And don't get it twisted. This video is by no means a defense of the misogyny and the white patriarchy views that Harrison Bucker exhibited at Benedict College in his commencement speech. But this is not a statement from him. So, now you know. Require your favorite content creators to do better research. Y'all have the day you deserve. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. What the actual fuck I cannot even fathom would be like to work my ass off to get a degree. And during my graduation, some guy a century says, hey, get back into the kitchen, babes. I'm sorry, like, what in the handmaid's tale was that? Her other boyfriend sat there and said, hey, girls, congratulations, I guess, on all of your accomplishments. You're going to think that getting a promotion, getting a job that you love is going to be fulfilling. But you know what's going to be the most fulfilling thing? Getting married, having a baby. Women aren't just tools or an object for men. It is not just a woman's purpose in life to have children and keep house. These young women are ready to celebrate and they're at graduation. They want to have a good time and that's what they're told? That is what they're told? How fucking anticlimactic of their entire college experience. It's like you farted in the room just walked out. And I want to say the poetic justice wasn't lost to me that as you said that there's a baby screaming and crying in the background. The irony of them having to ignore a screaming baby while you give your shitty graduation speech to them is just chef kiss. As a teacher graduates, I'm very proud of you. If you want to be a CEO of a company, I got that. I support you. If you want to be a mom and a wife, I support that too. If you want to be all those things at one time, I got that even more for you. But don't let anyone, especially that guy, tell you what you should and have to be. So at this point, everyone has seen the speech that this man gave. And honestly, it, to sum it up, he's essentially saying that women's life doesn't really start till because they become married, have children, all these things. As if that is the end-all be-all in, in life, but I digress. But to make matters even funnier, his mother is a professor at Emory University and has a master's degree in physics. Once I saw that, all of this began to make sense. 
And I think what is even funnier is that this means more likely than not, not knowing what his dad does, that his mom was likely, if not the primary in the house, both of them were working a lot. And let's just call this for what this is. This man likely has issues with his own mother, which is why he is now telling young women who have just worked four years of their lives, maybe even more, maybe even less, dedicating hours to getting their education that nothing really actually starts or or matters until you're in a relationship. And I just cannot imagine that that is what his mother thinks about her life and who she is as a person. But because so many men have these unresolved issues with their parents, whether or not it be their mom, their dad, or both of them, the rest of us have to hear their fucking insane thoughts. I also think that there is a continuously growing conversation about where women are supposed to be and what women are supposed to do. And it's really funny because let's say, for example, that a woman does become, does decide to be a stay-at-home mom or have children or what have you. More often than not, a lot of men just like him would call women like that gold diggers. Would <laughs> Like, let's be fucking for real right now about what we're talking about. So many women who do not want to work, who want to have these like housewife, all these things, many of them would be referred to as gold diggers. And it's even funnier when you look at statistically speaking, the vast majority of men do not have the financial well-being to be able to make a woman a housewife. So I'm really trying to understand in this overarching conversation about women needing to do X, Y, or Z, what exactly is the goal? Because it doesn't seem like men are able to figure it out the fuck out either. It seems like many of you want the perfect scenario without being able to bring forth any form of perfection yourself. I am incredibly curious though what his mo mother has to say because this conversation, whether or not it's the shit with Bumble that's popping off right now about Bumble saying that it is essentially on women to not be celibate, whether or not it's this conversation about the black wife trend and it is essentially black women showcasing the fact that pretty much everything gets taken from them to elevate a, a man or third this conversation of some random ass billionaire which fuck billionaires who said that he would pick a, a, a black woman as like the wife to choose or the person that you end up settling down with and that is now causing uproar because honestly i don't understand why the the focus isn't on like fuck that billionaire but i digress but all of these expectations of women, all of these standards that are put on women that are impossible to attain, yet somehow the blame, all of this still falls on women and not the men that are perpetuating these systems. Just, just insanity. Now, I, I just, I got a question. Where are y'all getting this from? I just, I'm seeing a lot of videos with people with this snapshot in their videos and providing commentary. And I'm just like, where are they getting this from? I've been looking on all of the reputable sites and I'm unable to find it. Did he say it in a podcast? Because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you anything. I thought this was the source. So I Googled that. This is not the source. I went over to his Instagram uh, I found a picture of him with Josh Holly, which says a lot, but I haven't found anywhere where he's said this. So where are y'all getting it from? I I'm just curious. Um, I wasn't able to find this, but I saw that the NFL did actually respond to the Kansas City Chiefs kicker's speech that he gave. Mm -hmm. NPR was talking about how the NFL responded. I was interested in what the NFL had to say because I'm curious if he's going to get the Colin Kaepernick treatment because, yeah, one of the reasons why, you know, they say Colin Kaepernick was excused is because of the negative publicity well, he's getting a shit ton of negative publicity and I'm just, I'm watching to see if he's going to get the Colin Kaepernick treatment. But yeah, I won't hold my breath on that. I won't hold my breath. But this is what NPR is saying. Now, NPR is saying that Bucker and the team have not commented publicly on his speech or the backlash. So that asks, that makes me wonder, where are y'all getting this from? 
Yeah, NPR is saying that he hasn't spoken out about it. So, yeah, but moving on. But in my interest on whether or not the NFL is going to give this man the, the Colin Kaepernick treatment, I wanted to read what the NFL had to say. Quote, Harrison Bucker gave a speech in his personal capacity. His views are not those of the NFL as an organization. End quote. So yeah, I doubt that the Kansas City Chiefs kicker will get the Colin Kaepernick treatment. Mm -hmm. I'll see y'all later. So this is all I got from this. <laughs> they are trying to disassociate themselves straight up because that is his curse to carry, coming to graduation to like, you know, the fact that people that are not women wake up every day to tell women what to do with their, or, I mean, their lives or what to do with their career and how to pursue it is something that I, it's very crazy, you know. Instead of him to give his normal speech and find his way out. I mean, it was even him. The one that I found really very funny was where he was almost trying to be emotional. I mean, he find, they say he who find a wife, find a good thing, right? But that is for you and your wife. Go home and practice all that, right? Leave people alone. Like the, uh, the other one man said that I, with what he was saying, they had a, child, a child was also crying in the background. They did not attend to the child, you know? But he was sitting there talking. See, you cannot be a man and at the same time a woman. Let women do what they do with their lives, their career, whatever they want to do is their, is their choice. If I go to school, finish school, and come back, and all I want to do is to be a career woman, that is fine, right? Don't tell me that I spent how much to go to college, finish college, and got my degree, and uh, you're telling me that uh, that degree is not really very, you see that my degree, even when I got married or something, if I marry, the degree is still going to be in my name, like forever, it's not changing to anybody, because it's not transferable, right, so let people do, let people enjoy their time, let them be, if a woman decides that uh, she wants to have a child, let her have, she does not want to have, that it's fine. If she wants to have just one child, that it's okay. If they choose to have like, if you, know, you choose to have like five, that is also good. That is your choice. But telling us that you want a time where women used to have like four or five kids or marry, stay back in home, in their homes, be homemakers and all that. That is bad at us, bro. You are not making any sense. And the massage, you know, is like oozing out so badly, you know? Uh, it's really unfair that you all have to also talk, I mean, like, you know, uh, speak when it comes to men and at the same time speak for women. You cannot eat your cake and have it. You cannot be, uh, you know, you can be both. So you speak what you specialize on and leave women to do what they want to do. Enough of coming out on the internet and seeing you all trying to dictate what you want women to do just because you are a man. You all are still some of the see. I am not trying to shed anybody. So men are always still looking for a way to put somebody in bondage. I mean, like get somebody, you know. And number one is another one is that it is not every man that can even afford if you can afford it that it's good like you know maybe the wife your wife also doesn't want to do anything she wants to be a homemaker she wants to stay back at home that is her choice but trying to force people to do what they do not want to do does not make sense and most men also are not making enough to be the greatest provider like you know i mean and also it's very important that a woman is like, you know, doing something in case if anything happens. That's why sometimes some women really find it very hard, if any, if, especially when their husband is the sole pro, uh, provider. If anything happens, it's very hard for them to fall, I mean, like, you know, to sit up. Some of them, eh, like, you know, it becomes really hard for them because she cannot also take care of the children. The, the man also, like, you know, they left it, like the five children, like he's talking um he wants more kids now, you know? So when something happens to the man, the woman may not be able to take care of the kids. Why? Because she's only, she stays at home and doesn't have anything done. 
So stop advising people on some certain things. Let's people be the pilot of their lives. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.